Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you once again for being here tonight. We do appreciate you coming um, and helping us help educate the public about this program. Uh, as Randall indicated, we've got a, a quick slideshow for you, and then um, we're more than happy to take any questions with regard to the program. Um, the program is Red Flex Student Guardian Program, and it is, we believe, the best solution to the ongoing problem um, that we're facing, which is um, people passing stop school buses here in the city of Lancaster. Um, a national survey indicated that in 29 states, nearly 85,000 vehicles illegally passed 108,000 school buses in just one day, which would represent about 15 million illegal passes within a typical six-month school year. Um, with regard to more specific violations here in Lancaster, I would defer to um, Greg Kelly, our supervisor uh, for transportation for the city school district. But I know at one point, Greg, you had indicated they were about averaging eight passes illegally per day. Yes, and uh, we did a study of uh, the drivers turned in information to me over a 15-day period, and we had 88 illegal passes. Now, that's probably not all that took place because obviously the driver's focusing on the children, and I'm sure they were passed at times where they didn't detect it at all. But uh, of ones they knew took place, they uh, reported 88 in a three-week period. And that's a pretty serious concern for the school district. Um, for the law director's office and it should be for the general public as well. Um, it's a serious safety risk and Red Flex was kind enough to provide us with some video um, that captures some of those violations. These violations are actually violations that occurred in Connecticut. Um, they're not here in the city of Lancaster yet because our school buses aren't outfitted and ready to record violations yet. Um, that'll be happening on October 21st. Um, but these are violations that are representative of things that occur um, on a daily basis here and around the country and serious concerns for the safety of our school children. There's about five or six violations here. I'll just let you watch and see how close some of these children come to actually being struck. And Stephanie, in that, all those cars should have been stopping. Absolutely. Yeah. The poor kids, they've got their, their coats on, their big backpacks to carry, they're carrying instruments. It's a lot to ask them to do at one time, to take care of themselves and look out for every other vehicle on the road. In each video, you can clearly see the stop arm out, the lights are flashing. You know, the school bus is doing what the school bus is supposed to be doing, and the violations are happening anyway. And that's representative of what's happening here in the city of Lancaster as well. Um, Greg, I believe you told me we even had somebody pass on the right side of the school bus when a, a kindergartner was getting off. We had a, a kindergarten student being met by the father, and they had ex he had exited the bus and was in hand of the father, but the car actually passed on the passenger side of the bus in the grass area, I would say less than 10 feet beyond the father and the student uh, to get around the bus. They also, in the process, crossed the double yellow line. Also, we, at one point, went through some expense to put on some outboard cameras, but they weren't getting the information that we truly needed but we did see in those incidences where uh, cars actually pass a bus and didn't even slow I mean they basically stayed at road speed uh, we, we saw a lot of information uh, shocking information through those cameras although we didn't get the detailed information required by Ohio law at the time we are going to talk about the requirements of the Ohio revised code here just a little bit too um, the Ohio revised code criminalizes violations for passing stop school buses under 451175. Um, the law actually requires any driver of any vehicle meeting or overtaking a bus from either direction 
to stop at least 10 feet from the front or rear of the school bus. Um, one thing that helps Ohio, um, as you saw in those videos, some of those were four lane um, Correct. sections. We do, we do not drop children off in Ohio on one side of the street and make them cross four lanes of traffic to the other side. 4511.75 specifically says they have to be dropped off on the side of their <coughs> residence. Um, so in Ohio, it is not a violation if you're on a four lane or divided highway and you are opposing traffic to the school bus, it's not a violation if you continue on. However, it is a violation if you are behind that school bus or overtaking that school bus going the same direction and don't stop. And we did see some of that um, in those videos as well. But as Greg indicated, we did previously attempt some potential solutions for this problem. Um, there was bus driver information collection programs that we did. Um, Ohio Vice Code Section 4511.751 actually speaks to the requirements of what the bus driver has to collect in order to um, act on one of those alleged violations. Um, unfortunately, it's, it's a big problem because the bus driver still has to take their eyes off of the children, which is their number one safety concern. It should be everybody's number one safety concern. It's a time consuming process because we're asking the bus driver who may get eight of these a day to stop right there and write down a description of the vehicle, a plate <coughs> number, a description of the person, a description of where it happened, some rudimentary information immediately so that they can go back to the bus barn and then put that on a longer sheet that our office would use for prosecution. So if you get eight of those a day and it takes you 10 minutes to fill each of them out when you get back to the bus barn, you've got over an hour invested at that point in trying to do that. Um, and another requirement is designate a point of safety in Ohio where a driver has to count the students as they're getting off and they have to watch the students get to the designated point of safety. They have to make a count to make sure 10 students got off, 10 students are there, not nine, and that way they can proceed. So while they're doing that process, there's no way that they can monitor traffic at the same time. Exactly, it was just too difficult. And that's, that's what I indicated. Oh, I'm so sorry, I forgot to slide forward. Um, time consuming, um, you know, for both reasons. Um, and then also, if they ever get called to court to testify about it. Um, in the Fairfield County Municipal Court, we schedule our minor misdemeanor cases in the morning and the afternoon because they're the easiest cases usually to handle and to take care of. Um, but the problem is we're taking school bus drivers off of their school bus routes to bring them in to do that. So it's, that's another time consuming cost factor that we have to consider for the schools. Um, and then, as Greg indicated, they're hard to prosecute. The bus driver has to be paying attention to too many things at one time. Unfortunately, they're not able to collect the information that we actually need to prove our case beyond a reasonable doubt, which is the requirement of the law. I know there were several times that the bus driver came in, you know, they had the good information, but they just couldn't identify the driver. And we can't go forward with a case like that, unfortunately. And then, as Greg indicated, we also tried recording devices, both on the outside of the bus and then handheld recording devices for the bus drivers. Again, these were problematic because the bus driver had to take their eyes off of the children, everybody's number one safety concern, and they were hard to prosecute. Again, the bus driver's trying to do so many things at one time, they may not get the video that we need to actually prove a case beyond a reasonable doubt. And so those were serious concerns with that. We also thought about law enforcement on or with the school buses, um, an officer riding on a bus or an officer following the bus. Unfortunately, manpower issues preclude that. We typically have 30 buses in operation any given day. Is that correct, Greg? Uh, 29 route buses, and in the, the three-week study that we did, it was random. There were 23 buses involved. So to pinpoint, say, this issue, this bus route, this bus route, it, it was so random that we, you, you really don't have what we would call a hot spot where we could uh, just deal with that issue and it would all be resolved. Exactly, that's the problem. We couldn't tell one officer to follow any one bus. And we have 29 buses, and day shift at LPD may only be six or seven officers. Um, so we'd be taking all of the officers off the street in order to do that. Um, again, if the law enforcement officers are following the buses, it's potentially not productive at all because it takes a lot of nerve, I think, to pass a stop school bus. But people don't generally pass school buses that have police officers with light bars right behind them. Um, that takes even more nerve and so you're not going to actually get any violations and you're not going to be able to hold anybody accountable is the problem. Is that accurate? That's correct. We, we've done that. Chief Bailey and, and uh, local law enforcement ride alongs, follow alongs, so on and so forth and they have never really proven to be very productive at all. Unfortunately. 
So as we were looking to potential solutions, we did find the Red Flex Student Guardian Program and the benefits of this program, especially for Lancaster, um, are no upfront costs. We, we have nothing out of pocket in this program. It's 100% violator funded, so if you break the law, you pay for the program. It has a potential to generate surplus funds, um, which would be nice, we're not banking on, but it would be nice as a possibility. 24-7 customer support, it is legally defensible, 100% um, compliant with all local, state, and federal laws. It has industry-leading detection and da data capture technology, and a dynamic back office providing violation verification, support, and maintenance to the city of Lancaster. And so, based on this potential solution, we did pass permanent ordinance number 1613, um, dealing with chapter 567. Um, it was actually passed unanimously at the first reading by city council because uh, city councilmen um, and women understand what an important issue this is and how the safety of our children really was at risk. Um, but what Lancaster Operation Safe Kids or that ordinance did was allow for DMT or detection monitoring technology. Um, this is what <coughs> gives us the ability to put the cameras on the buses. Um, it's a civil enforcement system so that it's a monetary liability only. There's not actually any points that would go on anybody's record, and there is no BMV record that the violation ever occurred. Um, the permanent ordinance also lays out an appeal process. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. There is the right to a review hearing, and then that decision can actually be appealed up to the Fairfield County Municipal Court or the Fairfield County Common Pleas Court. So there is additional oversight um, as far as violations are concerned past Red Flex, the company, and past the City Police Department. Um, and there are opportunities to appeal that. Again, some of the benefits of the program and why it was um, put in place here in Lancaster were the fact that it is a deterrent. Um, we believe that there's a uniform program in place that lets violators know we're taking this seriously and we are going to hold people accountable for their actions. Um, it's a police force multiplier. Like I indicated, we don't have enough officers to follow every bus or to ride on every bus every day. Um, and so it's a program that helps us catch violations and hold people accountable and we don't have to have law enforcement right there doing it. Um, again, the system pays for itself. There's a potential for additional revenue and then one of the best things as far as I'm concerned um, is the legal defensibility of the program. With regard to that, as Randall indicated previously, the Ohio Revised Code section 4511.094 specifically requires warning lights, or I'm sorry, warning signs for any photo monitoring um, devices. As they indicated in Lancaster, there are nine signs on the state routes coming into um, the city of Lancaster around the corporation limits. And these signs are just for the Student Guardian Red Flex program. They are not about capturing speed violations, not about capturing red light violations. It's specifically for this program. And they're posted to let people know that you could be cited for a violation, um, a civil liability violation you know, based on the fact that we do have this ordinance in place. And just a little bit about how the program actually works. Um, we do have representatives from Red Flex here tonight, so if the technology that I um, relay is not the most accurate, I would appreciate your help. Um, but when the school bus arm is activated, the system detects vehicles passing the stop school bus and doesn't require any actual bus driver involvement. It's my understanding there are three actual video cameras ca capturing digital technology the entire time um, that that camera is activated. So it's getting a close-up image of the vehicle license plate, a broader image of the violation incident, and a good picture, hopefully, of the person operating that vehicle um, so that it can be proven. And again, with regard to how the entire system works, not just the detection of violations, um, there's a digital camera system, um, one of the best out there capturing pictures of all the violations. It's a secure data capture, so all of that information is secure, goes to the Violation Processing Center, um, which is passed on to the Lancaster Police Department through their law enforcement interface, um, and then they make a decision specifically Lieutenant Wilson will be making a decision about whether or not a violation has occurred. Um, and once he does that, then he'll make the decision and make Red Flex aware of the decision, and they will send a civil liability notice to the violator. After that, there is a violator support service um, that's available. 
Uh, as I indicated previously, there is the right to file an affidavit of non-responsibility, which indicates that your car was stolen, your plates were stolen, um, it wasn't you driving the vehicle. Um, and you can provide that to Red Flex. It will be provided to the City of Lancaster as well. Um, there's also a way to appeal the um, actual designation of you as a violator. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit more as well. But there are violator support services out there. I did include actually a packet um, here tonight of what one of those violator notice packets would look like. Um, it includes the notice of violation, instructions on what to do, the affidavits for um, non-liability, and the request for a hearing. In addition to the option of just paying the ticket, um, it is a $250 violation, and you have the, the right and the we would encourage you actually <laughs> to just pay the ticket if that's what you did. Um, but that is included in the packet that's here tonight. And then specifically with regard to Lancaster Operation Safe Kids, um, we did just complete a root analysis. There was a nine day root analysis done um, kind of in two sections on the different buses that are in use right now. The violations ranged from 14 to four um, in any given day. So there still are a significant number of violations occurring here in the city of Lancaster. Therefore, on Monday, October 21st, this coming Monday, the start of School Bus Safety Week, we are actually going to have five smart buses on the road that will be equipped with the technology to detect these violations. Um, for the first 30 days, there will be just a warning period. There will be no violations <coughs> issued, so you can expect violations to start actually on November 21st, 2013. But up to that point, just warnings will be sent out. As I indicated, it is a $250 fine amount. 195 of that will go to Red Flex. Um, the reason for that is we aren't paying anything up front for this program. They have invested all of the time and the money in the technology and the manpower to get the buses um, equipped and operating. Um, yes, sir. Stephanie, how are the five buses and those particular routes chosen that will go live on October 21st? Based on the route analysis that was done by Red Flex, they decided, along with, it's my understanding, Greg has some input as well um, as to where he's seen the worst violations and where he believes the violations will be in the future. Um, and the route analysis was to detect, you know, the worst routes if we could find them, but like he said, it's kind of random. And I'll let you speak to whether or not you had any more input in that process or not, Greg. Basically, we're just choosing the routes that spent most of their time in the corporation because we have 57 square miles in our school district so some of the routes are not in the not in our corporation limit so we we chose those and then we did the study and the drivers you know when i showed them the study that i received uh, the number of violations and their bus uh, obviously they didn't know many of those even took place and that's a good point too. The violations that we're catching, the violations that we're issuing notice of notices of liability for are violations that occur here in the city of Lancaster. There is uh, GIS and GPS information um, that is relayed to the police department. It's my understanding that it, you know everybody's gonna make sure that this violation happened within the city of Lancaster before anybody receives a notice of violation for it. Um, and like I said, the Lancaster Police <coughs> Department will be the ones to determine if a violation should be issued or not. So you're going to have a experienced law enforcement official um, reviewing all of this information and making sure that a violation actually was there before anybody ever sees any kind of notice of violation. Uh -huh. An additional question, has there been any discussion or might there be a possibility down the road of extension of this out into the uh, Sheriff's Office jurisdiction? of Lancaster City School bus routes? I don't believe there has yet. Um, that's absolutely something we should pursue considering how much of the, the school bus routes are actually outside of the corporation limits. Um, I I'll think you're getting into uh, uh, where they can't write their own ordinance possibly as a county. Uh, that I'm not sure of. I just know that uh, I've been contacted by the county schools and they are obviously all very interested in what we are doing because they're having the exact same issues. So they may be talking to the sheriff's department. I'm just not sure. I, I understand that jurisdictionally, uh, there's a gray area with it being Lancaster City Schools, but outside of the, the city limits. And it just seems like maybe a natural progression at some point in the future. So that, that would be our hope. Yes, that would be our hope. I agree. Um, the issue, I think, for us is 
those signs. As long as 4511.094 requires the posting of those signs, um, it's hard to put them everywhere. Um, there is some talk, there's House Bill 69, which is currently out there, talking about revamping um, some other areas similar to, but not exactly on topic for the issue that we're talking about. Um, we do intend <coughs> to hope to provide some input in that process, um, and this, that would be something that, that should be addressed, the fact that, you know, it requires these signs, but there's no way to actually post them out in the county and in jurisdictions like that that are rural. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Um, and now with regard to the hearing process, I know a lot of people um, were very concerned about whether or not this was just going to be a rubber stamp process um, or how it would actually work. Um, the notice of liability will go out. You have the right to request a hearing, but it must be within 30 days of receiving that notice of liability. Um, you must submit the notice or the request for a hearing rather in writing and it must be accompanied by a $50 bond payment. The review ha hearing then will happen within 20 days of the written request being received. The hearing officer will be selected by the city, but the hearings are open to the public and if you're not found responsible, then that bond is refundable to you. Um, if you are found responsible, the decision is still appealable to the Fairfield County Municipal Court and the Fairfield County Common Police Court. So there is judicial oversight as far as that's concerned as well. Um, and I know that was a concern for some citizens um, that somebody besides just you know the school district and the police department were actually going to be signing off on this um, so that's all I have for you tonight if anybody has any additional questions or needs any further information please feel free to ask me as I indicated there are handouts um, provided by Red Flex um, there is the notice of liability as well as I have printed off a copy of the higher Code section 451175 so everybody can see that and what it does require of an individual who is um, coming into contact with a stop school bus. Anybody have any questions or anything you'd like to add? Yes, Tim. If a violation occurs, can you pick it up? It's not by decision. Is that something that changes still get before they don't do the sheriff's office? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, that's something that would have to be addressed at the hearing officer level. Um, yeah. No, they're actually going. They're actually going to be weeded out, is my understanding, so that Shane only gets violations that happen within the city of Lancaster. Um, you know, and it might be good to have those other numbers for the sheriff's department or for you know further conversations with the state legislature legislature on the on the process. And yes, they will be removed before he gets them. Thank you.